Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video, we defined capacitance of a capacitor based upon its physical construction. The size of the plates, the separation, separation distance between the plates, and the kind of material that is between the plates, either air or some other dielectric. And so, we can say that the capacitance depends on the physical dimensions and construction of a capacitor, and here's the equation that we use to define that. Notice that K is the dielectric constant, epsilon sub naught is the permittivity of free space, A is the area of the plate, and D is the separation distance between the two plates. But capacitance can also be defined in the terms of when it's constructed or when it's placed within a circuit. For example, when we have a capacitor, which is indicated by the letter C, and it's attached to a voltage uh, uh, supply, like a battery, which can push charges onto the capacitor, because that's what batteries and voltage supplies do, they will then load charge onto the capacitor. So here we have a very simple circuit with a simple battery and a single capacitor. And so when we have everything connected for a while, the battery will push charges onto the capacitor, indicated by the letter Q for charge. And now we can define capacitance of this capacitor in terms of this construction right here. Notice that the unit for charge is coulombs, the unit for capacitor is farads, and the unit for, for the battery for voltage is volts. Now, here we can say that when a capacitor is attached to a voltage supply or battery, that the amount of charge that will be pushed onto the capacitor is equal to the size of its capacitance times the voltage applied to that capacitor. In other words, if you double the voltage, you'll double the amount of charge onto that capacitor. So the stronger or the bigger the voltage, I shouldn't say the stronger the voltage, but the bigger the voltage, the more the charges will be pushed, the stronger the push, and more charges will therefore collect onto the plates. Double the voltage, double the charge, triple the voltage, triple the charge that will collect onto the plates. But if we now take that equation and we solve that equation for the capacitance of the capacitor, now you can see that's equal to the quotient of the charge on the capacitor divided by the voltage applied to the capacitor. And when it's written like that, then it makes more sense in terms of what we mean by capacitance. The bigger the capacitor, the bigger the capacitance, and when we say the bigger capacitor, we typically refer to it can hold more charge. So the more capacitance the capacitor has, the more charge it will have on the plates for a certain amount of voltage applied to the capacitor. So with this sentence right here, hopefully this will make sense. If a capacitor has twice the capacitance, maybe twice the area of the plates, then it can hold twice as much charge with the same amount of voltage applied. So again, the term of capacitance, you apply a certain amount of voltage and you'll collect a certain amount of charge on the capacitor. The more charge you collect for a particular amount of voltage, the more capacitance the capacitor has. For example, if this is a 3-volt battery and you collect 1 coulomb of charge, now you have a second capacitor with the same 3-volt battery, now you collect two columns of charge, it can hold therefore twice as much charge, it therefore has twice as much capacity when the same amount of voltage is applied. So this gives us two definitions for capacitance. One which is based simply on its physical characteristics, how it's constructed, what the dimensions are. The second definition is when you place it inside a circuit and you apply a voltage to it, then you can see that the amount of charge you collect for a particular amount of voltage also defines the capacitance of that capacitor. And it turns out, these two are the same. And that's how capacitance is defined.